Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to talk to you about my biggest regrets when it comes to decluttering. So make sure you stick with me until the end because as the video goes on, the regrets are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. So the very first regret that I have looking back is honestly just trying to organize before decluttering. You know, when the environment is too full and we organize everything thinking that it's going to solve all of our problems, it doesn't. It doesn't stick. It doesn't last because we still have way too much stuff in the end. That's the problem I actually had with my bathroom was, you know, I, I ended up reorganizing, I don't even know how many times, way too many. Looking back, it was, it was absurd. But, you know, I figured it out in the end. When you don't know what to do with all of your stuff, it makes organizing that much harder. So if you are able to declutter first, before you begin organizing, that is going to make your job so much easier and more functional and maintainable for the future. The next regret that I have was, <laughs> I still do it from time to time. I will be completely honest with you about that. But it's something that we confuse with decluttering is shifting. You know, shifting your stuff around <laughs> is co very common when you're trying to clean, organize, and declutter. So just because you move something from one room to another does not mean that you're decluttering it. Sure, you might be optimizing it for better use in another room, and that's totally cool. Like, go ahead and do that. If it works better for you in another area of your home, hopefully you'll use it. But if you're organizing and you're trying to clean up, I do this and I, when I'm trying to clean my kitchen, I'll move something from the kitchen counter to the dining room table and I'm not actually cleaning. Sure, I'm clearing my surface on the counter, but the item is still <laughs> out where it's not supposed to be. I have not put it in its home yet and I really just shifted it to a new area and it didn't help. So what you should do is always focus on making sure that you have things put away that everything has a home and so instead of one moving it from one place to another you're simply putting it away if you can put it away just as easily as you can put it down then you're winning you're doing it right and if you aren't quite there yet that's okay that can be maybe your next project is to just make sure that everything has a home and whatever doesn't have a home maybe it's time to get rid of it or find it a home and now just a quick break to talk about our partner for this video mint mobile my channel is all about making life easier, whether it is decluttering, organizing, or just living your best life. But one thing that I know for sure is that having my phone plan with Mint Mobile has definitely made my life easier. So I recently took a trip to Nashville with my husband, and on that trip, I had my phone with Mint Mobile and he had his phone with our previous provider. Out of our entire group of people, I'm pretty sure he had the worst coverage and I had the best. <laughs> that tells you anything. The reason why I'm bringing this up to you is because right now, Mint Mobile has a special limited time offer where you can get their unlimited phone plan for only $15 a month when it's normally 30. And that's literally a 50% savings right there. And who doesn't want to save money? Getting started with them and switching over your phone plan is so simple that it's practically effortless. I know I switched over my phone plan in about five minutes or less and it was absolutely the easiest phone activation I've ever done, and I stand by that, but don't take my word for it. See for yourself. Not only has being with Mint Mobile made my life easier with better coverage, it has made my finances easier too. Even if you are watching this video after the limited time offer has ended, their regular prices are still a heck of a deal, so don't waste any more time. Check them out at the link on your screen or in the description of this video. And thank you so much to Mint Mobile for partnering with me for this video. The next mistake that I found myself making was trying to do everything all at once. You know, multitasking, it's, it's pretty necessary in life. You know, we have to be able to multitask when it comes to things with work, school, family, you know, if you're, if you've got kids and it's time to cook dinner, you know, I can't just sit my two-year-old down and say, hey, don't bother me for like 45 minutes. I'm trying to cook you food. No, he's not going to do that. That is so not realistic. When he wants something, he's going to come to mom or dad and we have to be able to multitask. That's just a part of life. But if there are ways that you can try to do things one at a time and really try to minimize that multitasking, definitely do it because multitasking can be so stressful and sometimes we our brains really need us to just take a minute and slow down our brains are not meant to go at full speed all day every day 
You know, there are times when multitasking is so important for us to be able to do. It's nice to be able to exercise that skill every now and then, but when you're at home in your environment that's supposed to be relaxing, try to take some time to be able to do things one at a time, especially when it comes to decluttering, because that alone is overwhelming. If you're doing things that are pretty easy, not so overwhelming, yeah, go ahead and multitask those. I mean, they're easy tasks anyway, so why not just try to multitask? When you're juggling a lot of overwhelming things, multitasking is not ideal. Try to focus on one room at a time, one box at a time, one cabinet or one drawer at a time. That has been the best decision in my journey of decluttering so far, just being able to do things one at a time. I don't like to get everything done in one day or one weekend or even one year for that matter. I've been doing this for years and I've made a lot of progress, but I'm not done. And it's because decluttering is never ending. I'm definitely one of those people where my style does not stay the same for years and years and years. And every once in a while, I find that I'm just not happy in my home because I need something new. And if you're one of those people, that's okay. Don't, don't let anyone shame you for that. If changing up your home, your style is what makes you happy and gives you a way to be creative without having to draw on any paper <laughs> or paint anything, you know, it's, it's okay. And that's definitely considered a creative outlet, changing your style of your home or your wardrobe. You know, as long as you can take responsibility for the old things in your house and do what's best for them and the environment where we're not wasting a bunch of stuff, I think that's, that's okay. Go ahead and change redecorate. I literally just did that. I have a whole new filming corner in my basement and I'm pretty happy with it, but I had to redecorate. I had to buy a few new things to make the space work for what I needed it for. And honestly, I'm optimizing my career and my home by doing so. Sometimes investing a little bit into your life makes it easier but don't go overboard. <laughs> there are plenty of things that I saw when I was shopping that I wanted, but I didn't get. That's just a part of mindful purchasing, mindful shopping, and trying not to reclutter my home after I just decluttered it. The next one is hanging on to our items for too long, whether we're saving them to donate or saving them to sell. We're just not getting rid of them right away or we're not getting them out of our house. Maybe we're saving it because we don't know if we'll need it one day, so we're saving it just in case. You know, this is one of the biggest mistakes with decluttering because we get so hung up on how much we paid for it. And now that we're not using the item anymore, we feel like we're wasting it because we're getting rid of it. But in reality, it really is the opposite. And I've said that in a video before, so maybe I'm repeating myself, but it's as true today as it was then. Holding on to these items and letting them collect dust, in my opinion, is more wasteful than donating them without getting any money back from it. You know, the money's already gone. If you can sell it, then great. <laughs> Sometimes things don't sell very well and put a time limit on that for yourself. If it doesn't sell within one or two weeks, or even less, if it doesn't sell, lower the price significantly or just let it go. That's the other thing is that we overprice some of our items and that's maybe why they don't sell. But if you list it for dirt cheap, <laughs> if you list it with a really low price, chances are someone is going to want to buy that and you know, you weren't gonna get any money from it anyway, so even if you don't get the full value or even half for that matter, if you're getting something, that's a win. You're getting something back and somebody's taking it out of your house, off your hands, one less obligation for you. The next one is getting wrapped up in the value of things. And I kind of touched on this in the last regret that I talked to you about, but it also goes hand in hand with this one. You know, when we're wrapped up in the sentimental value or the monetary value, how much it's worth, whether we paid for it or not. You know, sometimes we receive really nice gifts from somebody and maybe it's a nice expensive gift. Maybe it's worth some money, but we never really liked it from the beginning. So why are we holding on to it? Because that person spent a lot of money on it. Always say thank you for a gift, whether you don't like it or you do say thank you because that person took some time to give that gift to you. But just because they took the time to give something to you does not mean that you have to keep it forever. It doesn't. Would you expect them to keep something forever and ever and ever and take it to the grave with them? Would you expect that? Because I doubt it. I sure would not. It might hurt your feelings to see it go, but you have to remember that if every single person had to keep every single gift that they've ever received. We might all be hoarders, 
I mean, really, that's the reality. If we had to keep every single thing that we've ever received, whether we bought it or someone gave it to us, no one would be able to live in an environment that is peaceful to them. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe some people prefer those types of environments, and if that's you, by all means, you live in what's comfortable. But I think we would all be hoarding at that point. And the other part of this point is getting hung up on the value of what was spent, you know? So whether it was a gift or not, if you bought it and let's say I purchased a TV back in the day for a few hundred dollars, maybe it was my first TV and I was so proud of that hundred dollars or two hundred dollars that I spent. But now that I'm older, I have other TVs, I have nicer TVs. I don't want to get rid of that TV, that original one, because that was my hard-earned money and I spent that money on this first TV and it was great for a long time, but now it's just kind of there, but I don't want to get rid of it. You know what I mean? All these thoughts can just flow through our mind and, and make us feel so guilty about letting go of these old things that we used to really appreciate. But the point is that we used to appreciate them. If you've grown, if you have nicer things that you use more, it's okay to let go of those old things. Yeah, sometimes I think that my old stuff has feelings <laughs> and I know that it, I know that they don't, but like I've caught myself saying, I'm so sorry, I have to get rid of you now. I don't need you. <laughs> and sure, it might sound silly or ridiculous, but maybe that can help you. I mean, just say sorry to the item. If you feel bad about getting it, just say sorry and explain why you're getting rid of it. I've done it and it's okay. Tell the TV, you know, we had some great memories. I really liked the shows that I watched on you, but you know, it's time to let you go. Maybe someone else can watch new TV shows on you. <laughs> okay, I can't keep a straight face while doing this, but try it. If you feel guilty about getting rid of stuff, maybe that, maybe that can help. And the biggest regret that I have to talk to you about today. Even before I knew that I was on this decluttering journey, before I figured out what I was doing, my biggest regret was decluttering and then filling my home with more stuff. Decluttering just to buy. Sure, I've had good reasons for it in the past and other times I haven't. That's been a big mistake of mine is emptying my home just to fill it with more. And at some points in my past, I filled it with more than I got rid of. That's not true anymore. I have decluttered far more than I have brought into my home, for sure. <laughs> I've gotten rid of so many things. I can't even imagine still living in the home that I used to be in. And it's still the same place, physically the same place, but the environment is far better and just astronomically different than it used to be. And I just can't imagine what my mental health would be like if I still had all of this clutter in my space. And that is one of the reasons why this is my biggest regret from the very beginning, before I really went on this journey of really tackling my house. You know, when I was in high school and I realized I had too many clothes in my closet, I would get rid of some, but then I would go out and buy new ones that I liked more. And sure, that was fine because I wasn't comfortable in the clothes that I had. And so I wanted better ones that did make me feel comfortable, but I definitely did not need to buy as much as I did. You know, I'd find a shirt that I loved and I had to have it in every color. That's okay sometimes, you know, if it's, a, if it's a really easy shirt and it's like an undershirt that you can put over everything, but let's take this one for example. I wouldn't need it in every single color combination that they have. The old me definitely would have done that. If I loved this shirt that much, I would have bought it in every single color combination. And that's not necessary. You live and you learn and there's nothing wrong with that. Make mistakes. Be young and dumb. I sure have been. I still am. <laughs> But the message that I want to send to you guys today, just like always, is do what you can, do what you have the mental capacity for, do what you have the energy for, and do what feels right for you. If things don't feel right in your home, change it. If you look at your rug and you say, oh, I just hate it, get a new one. Get one that makes you happy to look at. So rugs are like one of my favorite decor pieces that I use in a lot of rooms. I have one in the living room in our basement where I'm at right now. It's my new filming studio if I hadn't mentioned that. I have one in my son's room, uh, my own bedroom. They just make me happy to look at, you know? They cover up the old stains in the carpet from the people who lived here before us. And yeah, we've cleaned the carpets plenty of times, but sometimes stains just don't come out. And when I have a beautiful rug to look at, to walk on, and it's so soft, it just brings me peace. 
I can't really explain it other than that, but there are just things that some people love and that's one of mine. So when I had this old rug in our basement, it used to be the rug in our living room. And at the time I was hitting what felt like rock bottom with my postpartum mental health and I decided that I needed the change. I needed to redecorate and find a, a vibe in my environment that was peaceful and would make me happy. Looking back, like it wasn't a it wasn't a bad setup at all. Like there was nothing really wrong with it. I just had it for years and giving myself a fresh new furniture look or a fresh new living room, maybe it could help. So I did. And that's how I got into decluttering, but that's a story for another time. Mm. Gosh, I love coffee. Technically it's a latte, but anyway. So now that we're nearing the end of the video, I do wanna hear from you guys and I wanna know what are the biggest decluttering regrets that you have? Was it something that I listed in this video or was it something completely else? I really wanna know because if I'm doing something that you regretted doing in the past, help a girl out. <laughs> so before we're done here today, I really wanna say a big thank you to everybody who comments and engages on my videos. Your support has helped me grow my channel and I'm still working so hard to do that. So any likes, comments, or shares to your people, your friends, that all helps me out. So watching the videos all the way through, giving me that like or thumbs up, subscribing to my channel and turning on those notifications, and then commenting what you think, even if it's just leaving a heart to let me know that you were here. So as always, thank you guys so much for being here and staying till the end. Make sure you check out my next video, which is going to be part one of the transformation of this basement right here. I'm really excited to share that with you guys. I'll catch you next time. Bye guys.